Okay. Um, we can we can move to the next space, to the other color of purple gallery. So up to now, we've really looked into uh, the levels of like the cybernetic organism and their social construction. And uh, now I'm quite interested in the idea, like part of the definition was that it's a collective construction. And you can see how the collective construction goes through social interaction. But in terms of avatar, it's uh, it's also a collection. It's also a construction that goes through the platform. So basically, we are right now in frame. So we do not have full control over how we look. We're obviously working with some settings, basically. So there's a number of things that you can do within the settings. So here are some examples here of uh, you know me personalizing an avatar. There's a bunch of things you can do, but there's some things are completely off limits. So, for example, frame doesn't give you the option to have legs. That's just not an option. So your uh, identity construction is also limited by uh, the parameters of the platform. So that's something that I think is quite interesting because it sets a number of parameters that are different from the ones in real life because there's other parameters in real life for example if I want to be a ghost dragon in real life I can want as much as I want it's just not going to happen which in second life could um so it's you know so what I mean by this is the parameters aren't always bad they're just something to be aware of but in some cases they're quite limiting and also quite um reflective of societal bias because the thing is, you know, there's people programming those platforms, there's people building those things, there's people behind it, basically. So I just took this example here of Avatar Maker. So this is not um, this is not a platform. This just allows you to make a virtual avatar that you can then export. And the very first question that they ask you is choose a gender. So, uh, you know, this is uh, this. Um, could be quite limiting for uh, people who have a non-binary non-binary uh, gender expression, who identify as non-binary, folks that are trans. Uh, how do, you know this? This question basically has uh, considerably more weight for certain uh, people amongst us, and um, and you know as we've seen before with bleed through, a lot of people like to represent themselves in a similar way that they appear in real life. So this is uh, definitely. Um, you know, a, a, a setting basically that has weight. So these are, so we've seen, you know, like there's aesthetic limitations, there's some uh, gender limitations in some cases, but also there's there's uh, deeper aspects as well uh, in, in terms of uh, like, um, in terms of limitations that go, for example, into what you can say as an avatar. So there was a point in Second Life, uh, and this is uh, something uh, that Belshock goes into, uh, where, uh, you know, Second Life was trying to make the platform uh, child, child, child friendly. So they banned all uh, sexual words, but within those sexual words, they also banned all LGBTQ related terms. So people were not able, literally, you could not type something in and send, you know, part of the chat about uh, about anything LGBTQ related. And, you know, then they, they, they had to take that down because, uh, you know, there, there were complaints. But this shows you how basically, you know, the, the, the platform sets the parameters and your identity therefore lies within those. So, you know, if, uh, you know, maybe this is something we want to look into also as DMT, if we are, uh, if we are building our own virtual spaces, how how do we format those virtual spaces, and how much uh, freedom do we give uh, uh, the the users in there? Because some platforms have also uh, tried to include the users more in the creation process, so they're taking what we call like a prosumer approach. Um, so where so prosumer is a mix of like producer and consumer. So these are platforms where you, where the, where the users of those platforms can input some, uh, can input some, um, some elements that people can use to personalize themselves. So like skins, for example. So this is the case in Fortnite and in uh, Second Life, where you can design some dresses 
and sell them for Linden dollars, but Linden dollars translate into real dollars. So technically you could have like a whole virtual fashion business in Second Life. Uh, and therefore uh, you're allowing the, the, um, the people that are using the platform to create the world that they want to live in within, you know, within, within, cert within a certain extent. Because um, also those, most of those platforms are for profit. Uh, so that's also something uh, that we might just want to take into account, um, that most platforms are for profit and therefore it, uh, it really, um, it orients the way they, they, organize, they organize the platform. Um, so, you know, as we've said, some of those, some of those, um, some of those previous uh, limitations are due to, to people building the platform. So they represent also what people uh, what what like people's biases but but okay moving around the room there's also personal internalized uh, societal norms so when you build your own avatar uh, you are also uh, internalizing a certain number of societal norms that we find in um, that we find in avatars so you have a disproportionate amount of very good looking avatars and unrealistic uh body standards so um so you yeah so because obviously people want to be a version of themselves as avatar and usually an idealized version so um same dude from stanford uh, yeah made a study uh jeremy belton made a study about this because usually like the I think the one of the um, I guess like a, a natural thing to, to think would be like oh that's bad now we're now we're creating all those unrealistic body standards but his study goes against that uh, because he put uh, he, he made a study basically uh, putting people in a VR headset and uh, looking at themselves in the mirror and uh, there was uh, three groups people who were put in um, a good looking avatar body, people who were put in a bad looking avatar body, and uh, people who didn't go into the VR experiment. This is the control group. And so he stayed with 90 seconds in that, uh, they all stayed, yeah, 90 seconds in the experiment and uh, got to interact with the scientist. And the idea was like, okay, how, uh, how do people, how do people uh, react to that scientist? How, how close do they stand? How confidently do they speak, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, you know, people that are put in a better looking avatar speak more confidently, uh, speak, uh, you know, louder, and they are more personable again. And so that's within avatar. And then when they took off the headset, uh, you know, they were asked to leave and he got uh, this other person to run up to them and to do this, uh, this, um, to, to complete this questionnaire. So they were like, oh, okay, I'll, uh, I'll give you $10 to just uh, fill, in my, um, uh, fill in my questionnaire. I need it for my thesis. Uh, try, like basically, you've got this list of people. Who do you think would date you? So basically, who's in your league? And the people who were put in a better looking avatar had the bleacher effect, uh, you know, where they, they were more confident. So they actually, they uh, checked more people as, uh, you know, saying that they would date them. And the people that were put in a, like, bad looking avatar were less confident and the people from the control group fell in the middle. So this bleacher effect affects also how, um, how like, aesthetically pleasing you look as an avatar. That does influence your organic self. Um, and we also notice... So, so that's for that. Just, yeah. Um, we notice that those, uh, you know, uh, internalized kind of like beauty ideals apply beyond human avatar. So here you have a ram, and yes, it's a super muscly ma uh, ram, uh, like a muscly version of a deer. Uh, so you can see that basically those things uh, transcend, like uh, transcend human representation. Things become anthropomorphized and represent uh, ideal body standards. Even in this case where this person is half robotic, uh, she still has a very slim body 
etc cetera, etc cetera, and are traditionally considered attractive so uh, basically everything is not solutioned by just making avatars that don't look human at all or maybe it could actually if you're just like i don't know like a robotic cat like no anthropomorphizing maybe that's the way to go i don't know we can chat about that and the other aspect that i want to touch upon in this uh, internalizing societal uh, beauty standards is avatars are pixel perfect uh, it's very rare for uh, there to be in settings to have stretch marks or spots just because these are things that people don't ask for very much also they're very they're small details so you can imagine that if we only have in frame a few choices of shirts a few choices of haircuts the, the, the possibility of having stretch marks or some spots or you know is just not going to be in those settings so that's another aspect of uh of um of uh of uh yeah of avatars where they do not have small imperfections and it's quite interesting to see how this uh affects people in uh real life so i don't know what you guys think about this um because i think those things you know can go both ways um because i think it's been looked into a bit more on the impact of like augmented reality like people going into uh into uh plastic surgery uh to, to plastic surgeons you know and being like oh i want to look in real life how i look in this filter but i've definitely here, heard just... oh, sorry I've definitely heard about this thing about like how augmented reality is affecting like especially like teenagers who like Snapchat or uses like filters in Snapchat or Instagram or whatever and then they want to look like that and yeah going to surgery and stuff but I think it definitely probably affects more in augmented reality than um in you know something like an avatar because sometimes kind of you are aware it's not going to look like you and um well it, it might kind of look at you but it's not kind of like you know the only thing um but yeah I don't think I, for me for example like I think it might be an issue in terms of like if you are trying to choose like your body type of your skin and you can't find it um like more like that kind of thing instead of like you know small like small details like stretch marks and that kind of stuff yeah 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 I I, I agree because I think I, I think it's like with AR things are like you 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 see a, a very similar version of yourself that is only slightly modified because people I don't think people are going into plastic you know to plastic surgeons with like the the um, I don't know with like a blue face filter do you know what I mean like they're going with they're going in with those beauty face filters exactly you know, yeah like your eyes slightly bigger you know your skin super smooth your nose a little bit smaller do you know what I mean like yeah basically like you but without imperfections kind of thing mm -hmm. yeah so maybe you know yeah I, that's what I'm thinking as well is maybe those avatars are, are divided enough from like how we look organically for us not to associate too strongly with them I guess or like yeah. want our organic selves to like match it mm, that makes sense but there are definitely like some work being like there's definitely some work being done at the moment about making hyper realistic avatars, you know, things that track your whole body at the moment. You know, the tech is pretty invasive uh, to, to, to manage to do that. Uh, but there's, there's been, th yeah, there's been some work done about trying to make like hyper realistic avatars. So I don't know if the yeah, I wonder if basically the same effect that you have in AR will start to affect completely virtual avatars because of the resemblance that makes sense like especially mm. if we you sorry <laughs> go ahead no go on go ahead yeah i was just going to mention that a midpoint kind of thing is um you know the apple uh, i think it's on the apple i'm not quite sure but you know the um, your own kind of like avatar and you can like emoji what, what is it called like an emoji or something like that mm -hmm. um i guess that's kind of like a midpoint in terms of like it's kind of meant to look like you and sometimes you're like oh it looks even better than me so you, you know <laughs> yeah yeah that yeah i think that that might be one of the effects mm. 
question. Yeah, I think I think there's a bit of a trend in in VR avatars at the mo well, not a trend, but it's in a couple of applications where you can basically submit a sort of picture of your face and then that's kind of morphed on to a sort of avatar. So you have a, a quite realistic looking avatar that's, that looks slightly odd, um, to say the least, but, yeah. it, but, but it is a bit uncanny valley bit bit sort of um <laughs> disconcerting when you're having conversations especially if someone's put a hasn't done it very well but um like me so uh, but the other thing <laughs> in terms of uh, yeah so, so you've kind of got a face that looks like you but you can then choose a body that's like really slim or something <laughs> it's like, and then mm -hmm. uh, yeah so, so i think uh, yeah I, I think there is um but also what the point i wanted to make in terms of being in vr is I think the experience experiencing an avatar in VR is a lot different from experiencing an uh, avatar on a 2D screen. I think again that's that's something that's quite interesting in, 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 at the moment in terms of eye contact and stuff like that, um, and gestures like you were saying, sort of body tracking um, gesture is really important as well, which we're missing at the moment. Uh, obviously, I, I could jump in VR and and sort of have my hands, and I think that adds another dimension. But when I do jump in VR into this sort of space, again, you know, which I, yeah. I, I, I want to do because I, I, you know, you actually feel physically that you're in that space and, and the, the relationship suddenly changes. So if I was to jump in VR now, my relationship with everyone in this room would feel different. My, my, you know, it's just quite, quite amazing. I guess it because maybe changes from, you know, kind of like your mind thinking this is only like a game you're playing or was, you know, because you're surrounded by it, then you realize it, it's more than that. It's not just like, you know, playing Sims or something. I think it's a mm. distance, yeah. really, between you and the screen. So when you're inside the experience, there's no distance. Mm. And that's why you feel like no. that's a good point. Oh, but another thing I found yeah. quite interesting when I came into Screen VR was that everyone is the same height as well, because in real life, I'm used to kind of being the shortest person in the room. <laughs> and so I was kind of thinking about like, how does this affect me? I'm the same height as everyone. <laughs> and so, um, I mean, I don't know, I guess it does make me feel a little bit different. It feels like everyone is, I guess in my head, it kind of feels like everyone's the same age, which I usually feel like I'm kind of the youngest and the shortest. and um, yeah, here I feel like I'm the same age as everyone else. So this is so interesting that you bring this up. There's another study by Jeremy Nelson, who's made so many, where he does this test about height on avatars, where basically like he puts people in the in the in the in the VR headset and talks to a scientist that is all ten centimeters taller than them or ten centimeters shorter than them. And this is completely virtual, you know, independent from uh, their actual height. And they try and gauge how people react to this. And you've got that same phenomenon, same phenomenon as with attractiveness and things like this, where people, um, where people tend to act more confident if they're taller uh, as an avatar. And then again, it translates into real life, like their confidence. <laughs> oh, wow. So yeah that's yeah. really interesting mm -hmm. so kind of like how psychology also like it's part of like you know vr or like avatars as well yeah yeah it's so like this dude like made so many so many of those studies and it's kind of crazy to see how much those things actually do affect us uh yeah i'm i'm i'm, I'm with you on that as well uh Asimi, on there being the same height as everyone yet everybody else because I'm, I'm quite short in real life as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, and same with the age thing, you know? It's kind of nice that we're just kind of like abstract. I, I kind of like the abstract avatars that we have in Crane for that purpose. <laughs> yeah, I was actually wondering the other day. I was like, hmm, how old do you think these people are? <laughs> <laughs> And, and it, I feel like, because that's another thing that, like, uh, the, the um, uh, what's his name, uh, Burstoff talked about in uh, Second Life, 
uh, like he gives this account of this of this guy in Second Life who talks about um, how in real life you know people from the outside in, like you meet their physical appearance before you, they've ever said any, anything, uh, or you know before you get to like discover all that their personality, everything that they're about. But in Second Life, you have the opposite. You get to make their personality first, and maybe eventually you'll meet their outside physical appearance. Because they get, you get to represent yourself, in, like you know, within settings, but with considerably more freedom. Especially in Second Life, like you've got so much options for how you want your avatar to look. But you get to be almost like a physical representation of, of their personality, which I think is like a quite cool. Um, aspect of the avatar knowing people from the inside out um but yeah i think i'm you know i've kind of gone around so we're going to go back to the front bit and i'm just going to wrap it up uh, and just kind of resume everything that we've talked about So yeah, we've looked at like a uh, bunch of different properties of the cyborg as avatar. You know, I've kind of used uh, Haraway as like the, the guiding element to, to kind of uh, discuss all those different properties of avatar. Uh, you know, the layered personal identity construction and how, you know, our organic selves and our real life selves uh, interact, uh, you know, across platforms forms but all in real time you know us in front of the computer us in a vr headset us appearing as avatars all of that and uh how those like cyborg avatars create societies and how they're co-created with platforms and also integrating a number of biases we have as society um so we've kind of like touched on um, all all those all those uh subjects and I can see that Chris has walked in the VR headset because he's the only one with hands. Yay. Hi, Chris. <laughs> so, oh, this is amazing because, yeah, I, I think, like I was saying, that the, the whole experience now, I'm, I'm on floor level with you. Um, yeah, you know, it, it feels like I'm in the room with you. Yeah. And I, think, I think for me that, that this is... This is essentially the, you know, hopefully we can all get to the point where we've, you know, we've all got VR headsets and we're, we're starting to experience this. Because I think on this journey that we're on, uh, we'll hopefully do that. But Mathilde, thank you very much. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Thank you. I can clap. Yeah, I hope I'm the only one with hands, so I can... <laughs> I'll do a, a, a I can hear it. for everyone. <laughs> but that, that was amazing. And um, yeah, I think, I mean, we had questions as we went along, but I think if anyone, and 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 also, you know, kicking off, you know, we've only been exploring the immersive web for a couple of weeks, and Mattel just said, let's just do, let's just do it and do an event. And I think um, it was great that you stepped forward and took the first uh the first leap into doing something like this and i think we should do more we, you know this has sort of broke the ice and let's just do it and just um do more yeah it's fun i enjoyed it i hope you guys enjoy this too <laughs> and thank you everyone uh that came along to the frame i think we're, we'll have some q a and everyone that's watching on the live stream wherever there's no there's nothing there so yeah, everyone that, that joined us on live stream, hello, and uh, yeah, reach out to us um, if you want to know more about the, the DMC. But I think Mathilde, is, is there any questions from Mathilde? Or any like yeah, or anything that that this made you think of, you know, whether it is uh, project-wise or just like reflecting things like this, because uh, you know this is this is quite open, obviously. So even if it's not a question, like just something that, uh, it, yeah, something you want to say. I just found um, the identity politics really quite fascinating and interesting. Just the experiments and the way that things were perhaps amplified <laughs> um, and didn't perhaps turn out as we may have assumed. So I just thought that was really interesting. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah, yeah, I think there's so like, it's definitely it's definitely quite fascinating how um, 
how things are basically less predictable than uh, we expect them to be because it's just this this completely new way of experiencing the of experiencing ourselves like this guy um i think it was the i think it was the stanford guy who who was explaining this uh that before uh, you know, at the very beginning, you know, you could see yourself in the mirror. So you can see yourself doing something. And then we had video where you uh, could experience yourself asynchronously, asynchronously. Yeah, basically not in sync. So you could look at yourself doing an action that you're not doing right now. And now with avatars, you can watch yourself do an action that you've never done. So it's this new level of consciousness and of uh, and of uh, perception basically that's completely putting you know turning things on their heads in terms of uh you know in terms of um sociology and anthropology yeah i don't know if anybody else wants to there's a clean photo to... um let's think oh yeah we have a little yeah how would photo. you do that that sounds it's a good yeah, idea chris around. sorry oh, yeah. the question, <laughs> the question yeah, what was the guy's name that did the experiment? The guy from Stanford is... Was it Jeremy, Jeremy Bel Belson? Belson. Yeah. Cool. J Jeremy Belson. Yeah. It's Jeremy, as you would spell Jeremy usually, and Belson, B-A-I-L-E-N-S-O-N. -E cool, thank you. And so, yeah, that, uh, he, made a, he made a whole book on this, uh, Infinite Realities, it's called. I recommend the book as well. Okay. Should we have a team photo? I think Maria, what I can superimpose yeah, you cool. into the photo because poor old Maria's been working hard on the on the uh, uh, streaming. Yeah, big thank you, Maria, because I d I don't think I made it very easy for you because I, I I kept on crashing into you. I'm really sorry. I hope that doesn't look too weird. No, yeah, actually, that's a, a big uh, round of applause for Maria. Uh, doing the live streaming. There you go. Uh, uh, and, uh, and another, another shout, shout out to Ricebox um, Studios. They're amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Check them out. Thanks, Ricebox. Okay, okay. Team, team photo. Team photo. I can put my arms around. <laughs> <you. laughs> okay, well, thank you very much. I think we we will just continue the chat in the room, and I, I think at this point we'll say bye bye to all the uh, live streams. So Maria can come and join us. Um, does that sound like a good idea? And we could yeah, just carry on the sort of informal informal chat normal DMC stuff in the room uh, for those that can stay. Okay, great. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you, Mathilde. Yeah, thanks guys for coming. Bye. Everyone stay in the room if you want to carry on chatting. If you're going to carry on chatting.